So thank you for coming and checking out Frequency Martial Arts. And uh, we have a weekend workshop with Mateus Machado. And one of the things I like to do when I have guest instructors in is just pick their brain, see how their training's going and what advice they could give to anybody that's watching this video when it comes to their jujitsu training. So for people that may not be aware of your background, when did you start training jujitsu? Uh, I started training jujitsu. I was like very young. Uh, I remember my mom put me to train in the school close to my house. I was like five or six years old. And then I enjoy like the, the time to five to 10, around 10, 11 years old. I train like every day. I compete as a kid. But um, because of my dad, on this time, I, I would have all the pressure on me. And I was like very young. At five years old. Yes. And to five to ten and like five years training. And then I was like orange belt. I got my orange belt with nine years old. Okay. I was very young. So I, I've been at orange belt for six years because I stopped training because of all the depression and everything else. I, I love jiu-jitsu when I was young. And then on that time, between 10 and 13, I would say, no, that's not for me. It's too much. Everybody on my shoulder, you have to be good. You have to compete. You have to, to be example for everybody in the school. And that was too much for me because I was a kid and I want to play. Right. Just be here because when you put your, your son or a kid to train, for they enjoy, right? To, to have a good time. Yes. For me, that was not a good time anymore. Because right. I have to, to get that too serious and professional too young. You so wanted to be a kid. I want to be a kid and play and be with my friends and do whatever I want. Not be like Hobbs and Son. You have to do that. Right. And you see that a lot with you know parents here in the States where, you know, my child's going to be an elite baseball player. Mm -hmm. So they have the baseball season. Then they go into private hitting and private pitching and specific training for their position mm. and there isn't any time yeah. for their child to be a child so you took a break what motivated you to go back onto the mats uh i remember when i come back uh i came here for the first time uh you remember i was yeah. like 15 years old i came here and i started training at the gym and i see everybody look to my dad and how big his his gym was in tampa and i was and that's a, it's cool, right? I, I like the the vibe to come train, and I I start enjoying. And then I come back to Brazil. I've been here like for just a vacation, and I come back to Brazil with my blue belt. And I say, man, now I have to train. I have to take this serious. And I, I always like to train, but now I think with uh, a little bit more older, so I I realize, so okay, I'm not Hobson. I have to do my own thing, and then. I can be good at jiu-jitsu, but I know it's going to be like almost impossible to do what he did because he was great, you right. know, it was different. He was totally different. And then I start training serious every day in A2 in Brazil. And I start competing all the tournaments every month. I, I compete like twice a month. And I compete, compete, compete. And I remember that was like in three years, I've been training like good over there. And then I moved to US again. I was blue belt, and then I moved to live here, and then I started training every day all the time, like twice a day, and then competing here, and my dad, like, tried to push me a little bit more, sure. and I, I, I started, like, enjoy the pressure, and then, okay, I have to deal with that, and go to tournaments, and forget, forget the bad things, and right. just go for it, and I like it. It was very good for me because I use everything I learned in jiu-jitsu. I use outside the mats for my life and help me with everything. And that was one of the things you and I had spoken about before was the fact, you know, the lessons that you are learning on the mats about, mm -hmm. you know, setting goals. You know, when you first saw your white belt, you know, every adult is like, oh, you know, that blue belt, it, it, that's the belt <laughs> I want to be at. And, you know, the goals that you have off the mats, like if there's something that you want to achieve, mm -hmm. you have to put the work in For to sure. actually get it. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we also had spoken about was, you know, here at our school specifically, because we're in a college town, we have college students that come in for nine months out of the year. 
you know, we have an open door policy. They can train here, but we let them, you know, you go back to your, your main professor for your promotions. Um, what was it like going back to Brazil with a new blue belt? How did your training partners react to you coming back with that new blue belt. Yeah, was the first thing my dad did, he asked my professor, Leandro, he was my professor in Brazil for my whole life, he asked Leandro first if he can promote me. And then he gave me like a, a test to do it. Okay. And I remember I was warned just so he, he said, oh, you have to do a test for green and blue at the same day. And then if you pass, I'm gonna give you your blue belt. And my professor in Brazil said, no, that's okay. That's, he's, he's been training, and I think that's going to be good for him. So he did. And then I remember when I come back to Brazil and I be competing all the time. And before I moved to the U.S., my, dad, my professor called my dad and said, hey, Mateus getting good. He's competing. He's being like the, the number one for the, hang, for the ranking in Rio in, this, in 2015. And I'm going to promote him as a purple belt. And my dad said, no, you should wait a little bit more. I go, I'm going to bring him to, to US. I want him to compete in the big tournaments. He first as a blue belt and see how it's going to go. And so he didn't give me the belt. I, I remember all my, my teammates getting the purple. And I said, man, I've been training like more than all, the everybody. And I, did, uh, I get all the gold medals in the tournaments. Why am I going to be promoted? I'd be upset, sure. right? So he said, no, I talked to your dad. He wanted to wait a little bit more. And my dad made me wait for a year, like yeah. to, a whole year to get promoted at the camp as a purple belt. And my professor was here when I got my purple. So sure. he, they give me together. And that was, was good. My teammates don't be upset when I come back with the, the blue belt because they wear the blue belt when gotcha. I come back. Okay. Because I'd be off for these times. And I have a friend, Vinicius, he's in Portugal now. And we start training together. And he, he get all the belts first because he's been like training more than me. Sure. And I remember when I get my brown belt, he still the purple because he being like stopped because he moved to Portugal and he doesn't train much. And now he just got his brown. And I, I keep calling, hey man, I, I'm a black now, man. <laughs> You have to bound, bound for me <laughs> as freshman. I'm going to be a professor. And yeah. he, he just joke with him. But I mean, that's the thing, too. It's like you have that relationship with your teammates, your mm -hmm. friends, to where, you know, so, so often you're going to have a teammate who just picks up quicker than you. For sure. But, you, you know, when you get ahead of them, you're kind of pulling each other along to motivate them to not quit training because mm -hmm. of the fact that, you know, like you said, there are times when you see other people get promoted ahead mm. of you. Yep. And you question your skill set as to why didn't I get promoted? But, you know, it's one of those things to look at. It's like you have a certain feeling as to the progress of your game. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, your professor, your head instructor that they see the overall game, um, you know, back in October when we were at the camp, mm -hmm. you know, all the, all the professors there, they threw everyone for a curve. You know, they were talking about, Hey, there's, um, supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you have a, a Brown belt, you know, we have some teammates that are going from purple to Brown. We don't have, um, a belt for them to do a photo. You know, mm -hmm. Would we be able to borrow your belt? And I remember rolling with Doug when that question was asked. And Doug was another brown belt at the time. And he was all freaked out. He's like, are we getting promoted to black belts today? I'm like, Doug, we're two stripe brown belts. We've, mm -hmm. we've got at least two, maybe three more years. I mean, my plan is maybe another five. Just the way <laughs> how my purple belt went. Um, so just train, enjoy the camp. And then, you know, you're sitting there. They bring the table out. And typically at the camps, it's been, here's like a large stack of green belts, a large stack of blue, a few purples, a few brown, maybe a handful of black belts. Yeah. And at the camp in 2021, it was like reversed, huge Wish. pile of black belts. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's, that's not a supply chain mm -hmm. issue. And, you know, to be called out and be aware of that black belt, you know, like we were talking about, I, I thought I had five more years. Mm. But, you know, your dad, the head of the affiliation, my instructors, they said, yeah, he's, 
he's ready. He may not think he's ready, mm -hmm. but we feel he is. You know, and then you have that moment when yeah. your dad calls you out. Yeah, because I was not thinking idea? he's gonna do that. Because for me, because uh, all my belts, I get. I was the last one to get promoted. Because for my dad, it's he he. When I chose, I, I choose to be a competitor. He looked me with like a a, a professor and a, like a competitive teacher. You know, he gonna be my coach. It's totally different. He's doing with the students who come to the gym and he just wanna do jujitsu for like. Oh, it's my hobby. I want to train. It's okay. So m most of the time, this guy is going to be promoting faster than me because I want to be good in all the belts, get my rankings, go go about my, like set up my goals and go for it. go to the worlds, Pan Ams, all the big tournaments. So he, I was, and so on the 2021, uh, the worlds is going to be like, is, uh, was in the last, I think, November and the camp was in October. Right. So on my mind, he said, oh, no, he, he's not going to promote me because I go to the wars. Right. And so he just surprised me and gave the black and I said, man, how are you did? Now I cannot compete the wars this year. I have to train. I said, man, I know what I did. And that's if he's, he did it because he knows. And then I've been trained. Now I start competing as a black belt. I have like a lot of things to, to figure out. But I think I'm ready to, to sure. be there. And it's very good. And, you know, you have that, that time from the moment you get promoted from brown belt to black belt. How did the atmosphere on the mats in your training change after that weekend? Yeah. Everybody started looking at me with different eyes. And then I have to, I, I, I figured out I have to learn how to train again with everybody. Because as you have the mentality, like a competitor mentality, to be like, I oh, have to be the best on the match. I have to beat everybody. I have to, you know, do my thing. But now, when you get the black belt, the white, the blue, the purple, everybody looks to you like he want to be like you. So he don't want, you, you have to show them, like, you know how to train with everybody. You have to show them, like, how you deal with, like, a big, big guy and a small guy, how you train full row, all the stuff. And I learn, I said, learn, oh man, I cannot like just go train hard with everybody just because I'm a black belt. Now, because I'm a black belt, I have to learn how to train with everybody and then help each other and help me. Because when I start doing that, I learn a lot. My jiu-jitsu like from brown to black in a few months grows so fast. So now I think I can get like smart. I train smart and I help everybody and then everybody started looking at me and then, hey, professor. And I say, man, professor, right. that's so weird. You yeah. call me professor. But when you put like yourself in that situation, you help the, the, the lower belts and then you learn and he learn and you start like, oh, I want a private class and say, man, if I didn't have the same mentality I was in the brown, I have to be the best at the time and inside the mat and outside. I'm never gonna find have like privates or like the students to call me professor because they're gonna be like they're not gonna respect me but they're gonna be afraid to train. Right. Because when I, I I saw a lot of time a black belts with the mentality to the, have to be everybody nobody can like m do advantage on me. So but how is the guy gonna enjoy train with somebody like that? Right. You're gonna have a, a nice blue belt young. Very fast, but if you, you're gonna train with a black belt, he don't wanna do anything. The black belt just gonna beat, beat his up, and he's gonna say, "Well, I didn't learn anything." Right. And I then just, he may never come back. Yeah, he can just be like frustrated and leave, and you lost a student because of that. So I've been learning a lot as a black belt. And you know, you're training. How often are you training at the headquarters in Tampa? I train every day. And I try to take like a Thursday night uh, off, one day of the week off, because now we have like a competition training on Sunday. So it's like Monday, Thursday, every day I have trains. So I put on my mind like 
I have two days a week. I do like a strong day, a strong train from the competition train. I train very strong. And the other days I train more like smart. I put them like a, a goal. This week I'm going to do guard and I'm going to do this type of guard. So I put everybody on this type of guard and I put me in bad situations to learn, to improve my game. And that, that helped me a lot too. So, but when I go to the competition train, they put me on like on the group. They know how I'm gonna train because it's gonna be different train than the normal one. The normal one I can train with everybody, be like nice. But when they turn to the competition mode, that's when you have like, okay, it's gonna. I train like I fight. It's gonna. I pull guard. I hold my grips. I sweep. I hold the time. I waiting, and that's helped me. And and everybody knows. Okay, that's a competition game. He he's not being like. Uh, a bad guy, he don't want to hurt anybody, but he's right. trained for the weekend because yes. I try to do like twice a month, uh, I go to tournaments and then I have to build, get the points to get in the, for, to go to the worlds, I have to get points. So I have to be on the podium all the time. So I have to change the mentality when I get on this competition train. My dad, you have to see my dad train on these days, man. Yeah. He's crazy. <laughs> so you go, Two competitions a month. Mm -hmm. What's the farthest that you've traveled for competitions? Uh, I think when the uh, just outside the US, I go to Brazil for Brazilian nationals. But everything is here inside, and then I go to like Miami. I did like New Orleans, uh, and then I go like Chicago. I go to um, Las Vegas, and I've been traveled to around like for the opens. And then I do the big ones like American Nationals, the Pan Ams, uh, Worlds, and all the big tournaments. And my focus is gi, so I've been looking for all the gi tournaments. I'm not a big fan of no gi. I have to come back train no gi more. But like I told you yesterday, the heel hooks kill me. <laughs> so when you're training every day with the exception of Thursdays at headquarters, mm -hmm. What else are you doing uh, with your training besides jujitsu? I have a physical train. I do like uh, four times a week. And then when I train jujitsu on Monday, and then I train 7, 7.30 p.m. And then sometimes I do my physical training at 5, 5 a.m. in the morning. I go to the gym, I do my physical training, I work all day, and then I, I can train good in the night. Sometimes I cannot make in the morning, so I, t I have to train jiu-jitsu and then go to the gym, and then my day is so long, I get, yeah. I get home very tired. Just go right to bed. Mm -hmm. And then I try to do like one day, one day physical training, the other day just jiu-jitsu, because Thursday is the, the uh, competition training, so I cannot like do lift ways or anything. Sure. And then I do like that. Right. And then you know, one of the questions that we had from some teammates is with the training that you do, the competing that you do, what do you like to do when you're not training jujitsu? When I'm not training jujitsu, I try to be like with my wife and then take my dog to the dog beach and try to find a new, a new rub. I was a big fan to skateboarding, so, but that hurt me a lot. And then now I try to find something like to surf, and then I show you the thing with the yeah. cable, because in Florida, we, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't have waves. Right. And then I have to find something to do it, and then I look for this this cable thing. It's like a wakeboard with the cable. And then I'm, I'm gonna try to start doing that. Yeah, that looks so cool. Mm -hmm. I always like with something. I'm like a um, hard car sports. I, I'm big fan. Like. A, uh, a snowboard, skateboard, and all the stuff. So I always like like to to do that because when I stopped training when I was young, uh, to 10, 11 years old, I put in my mind I want to be like a professional skateboard. Oh yeah! And then I I been to the to the skate park every day and I did like I did very well. I I put my mind on that and I did, but I hurt myself all the time. I hurt my knees, my back, my head. It's very dangerous. They but make it look so easy on TV. They on make the it, and you look something on the TV. I have to do it like the guy did, and yeah. it goes to the skate park and break arm. Yeah, <laughs> That's no, some... Man, why did I do this? Why did I do that? <laughs> you know, I remember as a kid growing up, you know, the same thing. I wanted to be a professional skateboarder, and I remember riding my skateboard, and 
I was on like a, a bike path and it said no roller skates, no rollerblades, no <laughs> skateboards. I'm like, oh man, no big deal. And I was going down this hill and like a small little pebble <laughs> caught my skateboard wheel. My skateboard stopped. I went sliding off, messed up my face, mm. you know, not fun. Yeah, um, not fun. So what advice would you give to parents that want to get their children enrolled into a jiu-jitsu program? Uh, I think they have to do it because it's going to be great for the, the kids. They're going to learn a lot of good things inside the mat and they're going to use outside in the school, inside home. They're going to learn like how to respect each other, how to be like here like you have the rank belts. He's going to learn here is the same thing when he goes to the school. He knows the teacher is like higher and then they have like the, the owner of the school and then the principal that everything is like about degrees. It's like he and the mats. And I think he's he going to be more like he knows how to, to de defend himself because that's uh, self-defense. He knows jujitsu and he'd be more confident to do everything he wants. If somebody started like picking him, like bullying and the, all the stuff, he knows how to defend himself, how to speak with somebody. Oh, that's happened. Because sometimes you have kids who doesn't know how to express himself and then a couple of things start is start on his life when he's very young. And like you, we talk about the, we, we joke with the kids in the mat. Like mm -hmm. we put like a nickname, we're doing like a nice jokes. Right. It's like sometimes the parents dis, the, doesn't like it and say, why you talk with my kid like that? Why you put a nickname on my kid? Yeah. I say that, that's gonna ha happen in the school outside the mat. So if he's learning here, that's gonna be good for him. He doesn't have a problem in the future. So he's gonna be like, more strong, he's gonna know. Oh, that's not a big deal. He's talking. He don't know what he's right. talking about. Because a lot of times, kids spend so much time on electronics, mm. they don't know that. Hey, you know, my friend is joking with me. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you know any harm or ill will. Yep. And it's just like that form of communication that you know, unfortunately, electronic gadgets don't convey mm -mm. Um, when it comes to an adult who you know maybe as a child they their parents had rolled them into a martial arts program like taekwondo or karate and then you know here they are you know 30 years later they're looking to try jujitsu mm -hmm. or maybe they have no experience whatsoever with martial arts what advice would you give them when it comes to finding a program that works for them yeah, I think they had to find a school with like a, a family vibe inside the school, right? With everybody talking about everything. We have the, the conversation about the life, about the things you have outside, inside the mat. And then you're going to have friends inside the gym. And when they start training, it's going to be like the first day is going to be horrible. I know because I saw with I, that not happened with me because I started very young, but I have like I saw all the students when they start training because it sometimes came like a huge guy to the gym, like very strong, and he lifts two weights every day and he started training to do it like a wet belt. And then he stepped in the gym and he's gonna train with a teenager, it's a blue belt, and he's gonna get destroyed. Right. And he looked for how this kid could beat me, you know, I'm right. very strong. I can bench press 300 pounds. Yeah, I can get times. this kid and throw him in the air. Right. And that's like, and then he has to, he, he, now he's going to learn, okay, it's not, it's not matter just the size, it's not matter the age, it's matter like to respect each other and see, okay, this guy, he's a black belt, so he, independent of the way of the, the size, he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And when I come white belt and he started learning this, the first week he'd be frustrated because that does not make sense. You know, I'm training every day, I'm very strong, I'm running, I'm doing all the stuff. And otherwise for the guys who doesn't do anything, he just came and he'd be like surprised with it. If he's keeping training like for a year, I, I always talk with the guy, he the, the green belt, the old guy. Red. Lorraine yeah. and I, I would talk to him man I'd be so happy when I see guys like you on the on the mats because I saw guys start training on your age 
and they look like very old and like few years later they look younger and I say how that possible right he start training he be he look younger now yeah. he just to do jujitsu right and his life changed like he said I my life changed when I changed when I start training jujitsu and I, I'm not looking for stop anymore yeah and you know that was the other thing too that you, know, you you bring up is you do have people that come in they train and they have this mentality of like, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I should be able to move these people. Mm -hmm. And then when that jujitsu bug bites them, and mm -hmm. they're like, oh man, I want to get better at jujitsu. Well, I'm coming to class three times a week, I'm doing private lessons, but man, I still don't feel it clicking on the mats. Mm -hmm. And then they make that decision to, I'm going to eat better, I'm going to get, you know, better sleep, mm -hmm. I'm going to look at, you know, not spending all my time on my electronic devices and just sitting in place. I'm going to become more active. And then you see that click on the mat yeah. where they're moving better, they're feeling better, they're not as achy. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, a great thing when you hear students talk about that. and You see, like, uh, the photos, you know, of, like, their first class and then, six months later and then two years later like you said mm -hmm. they look so much younger you know why is that and it's yeah. just coming in and putting time on the mat for sure that happened that happened with me uh because i always train right but i was like i'm not like doing physical training i just started doing this physical training after my black belts i started like take serious and professional my dad always picked me and say Oh, uh, you train cra like crazy, but you don't take like this like a professional. And then I start like, okay, I'm gonna take like a professional to see what's gonna happen because I train every day and I, I know jujitsu. Right. But when I start doing this, I start like eating better, do the physical train, and do the all the stuffs. My jujitsu grows so much, and I say, man, how that's possible? Because uh, what happened before? I was training jujitsu like twice a day every day and then work and then I go home and I eat whatever I want and then my, my weight is always the same, my muscle, I don't need the muscle because I know the technique, on well, my mind I have that. But it's like you have a car and you walk with your car with no gas like on the, on the, on e. on, in all the time. Yeah. You, your car is going to walk but one, one day it's going to broke something. Yeah. And that's why I always have like injury, my knees are always bad, my, my elbows, I always feeling bad. And then when I started like eating better and do the physical training and outside the mats helped me inside. And I said, man, now I feel like much stronger, I feel lighter, I feel faster, and I go home, I eat clean, and everything started getting better. And that was like, in two months I see all the, I can get all the difference. And then the guys in the gym start like, oh, what do you, you take? You take asteroids or something? I right. said, no, man, I just take a nice meal in the morning, a nice meal in the afternoon, and I eat sleeping good. Yeah. That's it. I just stop. We eat like junky food and do all the workout, have to do it. Because if you have discipline outside, inside the mat, it's going to be like perfect. Right. You know, and yeah, it's one of the things too, you know, you know, some of the books that I've been reading, you know, they talk about you can eat healthy, but if you don't know your portions, mm -hmm. you still could be eating too much mm -hmm. or not enough. Not enough. You know, some people are like, oh, I like a snack. I like to have an apple with peanut butter. But when they started taking the actual measurements of their serving size, like I was actually having two servings of apples and six servings of peanut butter so that's really not helping <laughs> no. know, with their weight um so yeah so making sure that you know you're just eating the proper portions eating the right foods and again you know we we're talking with steve the other night where you know he found stuff that worked for him and when he made that change like the arthritis that he was feeling mm -hmm. was gone and like you brought up, you know, as long as, you know, he stays disciplined with that, he's going to perform that much better on and off the mats, mm -hmm. whether it's his job or his training. Um, and then, you know, um, 
you know, the last thing before we wrap up, you know, we talk about, you know, the importance of parents getting their children into the program, advice for adults. Um, where do you see your jujitsu game in the next five, ten years? What goals do you have set up? Uh, I want to be world champion. I put that on my mind. And I, I, every day when I wake up I, and I say, I say to me, I say, I put on, I say I'm going to be a world champion. I'm going to pay the price, train every day, eat better, and do whatever I need to do to get on that point. So I don't know in how many years I can get this point, but I'm going to be 100% sure I'm going to be there every year to uh, like focus on my goal. And I'm gonna be competing every day, every uh, train every day, compete every weekend I can, and do my best to get this goal. And then after I get my this goal, it should be like a world champion. And then after that, I wanna be like a a, a better coach. I wanna I wanna coach people, train. I, ha I wanna have like guys with me. Like to go to the tournament. I I like this vibe to go to the tournament with the friends, see my fr my teammates win. Because it's not about just me. I I, I have this on me. I want to be a world champion. But I I do I feel so great when I see like a teammate train with me and I I teach something to him and he go to the tournament and he win with something I teach. Yeah. That's my, I feel like that's amazing. So I want to be like a good professor. I want to have like a nice team with competitor guys not just like inside the mat but outside for their life to bring because like we talk about that yesterday too when you have a jiu-jitsu school sometimes you're gonna have like a guy who's gonna get on the school like white belt and he's gonna train to the black but when he's get the black he's not gonna stop training he's gonna be training with you for whole life so he's gonna be part of your family and then I, I want to build my family, have like a big family on the mat. I would have on the HQ, mm -hmm. but I have a plan to have my, my own thing, get bigger like that, have a, a competitive team, and I, and I be competing. I don't think I'm going to stop competing, like when I get like masters, and I'm going to still compete because I, I love the, the vibe to the tournament. Sure. I like to go there, do, do my thing. I enjoy it. It's not like all the... I don't feel more all the pressure on me because I go to have fun. Right. Most of the people ha go there and have, have to win, have to do that. No, I, I go to show my jiu-jitsu and if I win, it's like consequence the things I did in the mat. If I lose, I'm going to come back to the mat and fix what I did. And I think that's going to be my thing for, the, for life. I, I'm not planning to stop. <laughs> all right. Don't stop. Focus on your goals. And thank you so much Oof. for being you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you so much.